school. I am Abdelhatib Ismail, a master student at Nelson Mandela University, and today we'll discuss a potential novel sampling technique dubbed the Rapid 10 Sampling Method. This sampling method is being developed to help explore the research question of my postgraduate degree, which is whether music thicket would more appropriately be classified under the forest biome. This method is a novel rapid sampling technique using photography and citizen science platforms. This technique is point-based and aerialist, and the key aspects thought of in the development of this method are accessibility, speed, simplicity, and efficiency. The protocol for the technique is as follows. Firstly, a fairly homogeneous area of vegetation is identified, that is one with a similar disturbance history, burn history, and of the same vegetation type, and this is known as the site and will be given a, un given a unique four-letter code. Within this area, five to 15 unique points are identified, with care taken to sample the most representative portions of the area and including variation. Then the amount of points chosen is up to the sampler and depends on the, the, the goals of the, the sampling itself. Then within each of these points, 10 unique plant species are to be recognized and photographed, and this is where the 10 from Rapid 10 comes in. These 10 plants should be reached without moving from the selected point, and multiple pictures of individual species may be taken for a better chance of identification. These pictures are then posted by naturalists with unique annotations. The observations are identified by iNaturalist users over time and a database is stored in a spreadsheet complete with site, point and species information. And for analysis, species frequency data can be, can be used. I will now attempt to demonstrate the process of the technique. After the identification of a stretch of homogeneous and targeted vegetation, the first point will be selected. The selection of these points are subjective. Uh, a sampler may be inclined to find a representative point in the area or be drawn by a hook in the landscape. It is understood that the more charismatic or overt plants may seem more enticing for a sampler, but the knowledge of the other 89 species in the area will not be known until that point is actually sampled. The image shown here represents one point marked by a pole which also gives an estimation of the vegetation height. So at this point, photographs of 10 distinct species will be taken, usually starting from the canopy and working one's way down to the understory. Here, the ability to identify species will not be as important as the ability to distinguish between different species. Care should be taken that the species should all be located around the point only, and even if the method is developed to be aerialist, the sampler should ideally not be pressed to lift the one's planted foot. In undisturbed habitats, it is fairly easy to find 10 species, but the limited space of a single point often means that samplers need to get low down into the understory to find the elusive, small and unassuming plants. So this process will be then be repeated for between 4 to 14 points depending on how many the sampler needs to do and the images of all species will then be uploaded to the iNaturalist website. So iNaturalist is an online citizen science platform where users may upload observations of individual organisms with locality data. The identification of organisms are held, also held up to the iNaturalist community and the transparency and organization, just the general organization of the website, offers an ideal platform for a database. Special tags are also added to each of the iNaturalist, iNaturalist observations, which would equate to at least 50 observations per site if five points are conducted by the sampler. The act of tagging these observations will group all relevant observations under the same place and will also allow an organized retrieval of the data. So the first tag used is the Rapid 10 tag, which groups all observations related to the sampling method in one place. And as seen here, each point would also have a unique tag, showing the site locality as well as the point number within that site. 
These tags can be queried on the iNaturalist website and a CSV file may readily be downloaded to perform analysis on. And here's just an example of what the downloadable file looks like with the unique observation ID, which is used by a naturalist, the tags and the species name apparent. Only three factors were selected in this particular query, but numerous others are available, ranging from location accuracy to time of day. And a database can then be structured from this. So going back to that first um, demonstration of a point, this is a, a list of 10 species that were observed in that point. One thing that may be clear is the apparent bias of the method to smaller plants, as only two large shrub species were recorded. This is likely due to the scale of larger plants in such a small area, where not as many species can be packed in. Once multiple points are conducted, Frequency may be attributed to the different plant species. The example displayed here represents a site where 15 points were conducted. Crassula ovata at the top of the table, for example, was observed in 14 of the 15 points. So the origins of this method. My master's research explores the boundaries between thicket and forest and will compare floristics and structure across substantially different vegetation types. For this, the sampling technique needs to be comparable across vegetation units of, of varying structure and scale. The aerialist nature of this method and the focus on species is thought to be more appropriate for this task. So I have already shown an example in Valley Thicket and here is just one in Music Thicket with a species list from that point. This is one point in a forest. And this is in Feinbos. The broad scale of the study also means that large amounts of detail with regards to floristics are not needed. The method only attempts to distinguish vegetation at the biome to veg type level and not at the sub-community level. The Rapid 10 method is also designed to be accessible by botanists of differing skill levels and experience, including citizen science. The method does not require the identification of species, only the ability to differentiate between different species. This method does not require plots or transects to be set up, these are tasks which may be arduous and, and time-consuming in difficult vegetation. So it may be useful just to put this method in context with some common issues in plant sampling methods. So Lesner and Leps 2020, for example, state that the three most common errors plaguing vegetation sampling are the misidentification of species, the overlooking of species, and inconsistencies regarding cover abundance estimates. Archer et al. 2009 also report that differing levels of skills and experience in botanists may cause spurious inconsistencies in vegetation monitoring. Visual cover estimates are also reported to vary between observers and even within the same observer's estimates, hampering monitoring efficiency. The Rapid 10 method may attempt to, to help with the aforementioned problems to some extent. So firstly, species misidentification can be decreased through the posting of images on iNaturalist. This provides a permanent record of that species on an online platform available to the public, which uh, increases the chance of misidentifications being corrected. This is in contrast with the, with the practice of using dried specimens for postdoc identification, which in many cases may not be as permanent or as visible as an, uh, as an online record. So photographs are definitely not comparable to specimens in terms of identification potential, but quality photographs should be sufficient for the vast majority of species. The Rapid 10 method may also increase exhaustiveness, potentially decreasing the amount of species missed. The method effectively decreases the sampling area to a single point, where species are more unlikely to be missed. The method also removes the, the bias of estimated cover and instead uses frequency. This may not give a, as a comparable proxy of dominance, but, uh, but should still reliably show a dominant and important species. 
So before this method is actually implemented for the purpose of the study, sufficient evidence that the method actually works is, of course, critical. The, the method has to tick the following boxes and before active, being actively used. So some questions are like, can the method be used to differentiate between different biomes? Does the method produce a sufficient list of, of, of dominant species? Is the method feasible in all vegetation types? And um, does the method incorporate any significant, biologically significant biases? So these aspects need rigorous testing, but there, there are some other more process-minded questions such as how, how big exactly is a point? How many points are needed at a site? Is 10 species enough at, at a point? Uh, what type of analysis is most appropriate? And is identification actually possible or actually feasible on a naturalist? In terms of potential outcomes and the possibilities of this method, the goals of the method are to quickly classify vegetation at a broad vegetation unit scale over large areas. So incorporating citizen scientists and parabotanists increases the accessibility of vegetation science as a whole. And the use of iNaturalist as a data platform enhances transparency in plant sciences. So in theory, all data could be reviewable and and even reanalyzed from what is uh, freely available on iNaturalist publicly. This method may also increase the levels of community data that is being released. So while individual species occurrence data is on the rise, community data is becoming less available. From a community standpoint, data on which species are occurring in the same place is incredibly useful. So thank you for providing the time to listen to this talk. Any advice or comments on this method is greatly welcomed. There is still much development needed for the sampling method and experienced input will be incredibly beneficial. So this is also a call for anybody that would be interested in, in helping with the, the testing of this method. Thank you.